Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer is the estate version of the Insignia Grand Sport, and promises greater practicality, equipment and value for money than the previous generation model, which was launched back in 2009. To achieve this, Vauxhall has increased the size of its flagship estate, it's now longer than an Audi A6 Avon, and stretched the distance between front and rear wheels by a colossal 92mm. The upshot is a spacious and roomy cabin teamed with a boot capacity of up to 1,665 litres with the rear seats folded, which is enough to compete with rivals such as the Mazda 6 Tourer, Ford Mondeo Estate and Skoda Superb Estate. And yet, the space race is only half the battle in today's multifaceted large estate car class. The Skoda is superbly comfortable, the Mazda great to drive and the Mondeo an all-round contender. So what else does the Vauxhall have up its sleeve to compete with the class leaders? Read on to find out, bags of equipment for your money as always with Vauxhall there's a vast selection of trim levels to choose from, from the base design spec right up to the top of the range elite NAF. All models come as standard with 17 inch alloy wheels, aircon, keyless entry and keyless ignition, a 7 inch infotainment screen, Bluetooth phone connectivity plus Apple CarPlay. Android Auto and Vauxhall on Star Assistance. There's more too, as Vauxhall attempts to bring the Insignia Sports Tour in line with the cutting edge equipment found on rival cars. Optional equipment includes a head up display, autonomous emergency braking, wireless charging, and adaptive LED lighting. Six available engines are a weak link. We've no complaints about the sheer diversity of the engines on offer. Customers are able to choose from super efficient 110 horsepower 1.6 litre diesels and 260 horsepower 2.0 litre turbocharged petrols should they wish. However, even the all new 1.5 litre petrol doesn't feel as punchy as the figures suggest, and offerings from rival manufacturers are crisper and more enjoyable to drive. Over on the diesel front, and the 1.6 litre turbo D is talky but harsh at the top end, and ultimately feels old hat. We've not driven it yet. But we reckon the 2.0-litre Turbo D will be worth its weight in gold over smaller displacement models. Big body, big boot, big practicality Vauxhall couldn't exactly hike up the dimensions of the Insignia Sports Tourer and not make it any more practical. Thankfully, the maximum boot capacity has grown by 135 litres to 1,665 litres with the rear seats folded down, and 560 litres with them in place. Space in the back seats is up there with the best in class Skoda Superb Estate, providing ample legroom even with the front seats set back. The level of headroom is also impressive, but remember that the optional double panoramic sunroof reduces space dramatically. Comfort over cornering the Insignia Sports Tourer is a softly sprung family barge and it makes no apologies for it. Try and drive it enthusiastically like you would a Ford Mondeo or a Mazda 6 Tourer, and you'll quickly feel the body roll significantly as you move from bend to bend. This is not a car to be rushed. However, grip levels are high and when driven normally the big Vauxhall is a safe, comfortable and relaxing car to drive. The verdict the second generation Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tour has built on the strengths of its predecessor, and added real competence in the practicality and standard kit level departments. It doesn't dominate in any one area, yet puts in a very strong showing in a number of key ones, and can only really be folded for its uninspiring engines. If you're after a safe, practical and comfortable large family estate, it's well worth a look. Read on for more details about the Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer, 3 petrol and 3 diesel engines on offer 8-speed automatic gearbox also available currently no hybrid or electric version customers can choose from a choice of 3 petrol and 4 diesel engines, spanning from a super efficient 110 horsepower 1.6 litre Ecotec diesel to a turbocharged 260 horsepower 2.0 litre petrol with all wheel drivers standard. Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer petrol engines diesel has always been the natural engine choice for the Insignia, yet a new 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine could be about to change this. Available in two different power outputs, customers have a choice between an entry level 140 horsepower unit and a Meteor 165 horsepower version. The former produces 250 newton meters of torque and is capable of accelerating from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9.6 seconds going on to a top speed of 129 miles per hour upgrade to the 165 horsepower power plant and there's the same level of torque on offer, yet it's available over more of the rev range, peaking at 4,500 revolutions per minute as opposed to the 140 horsepower units 4,100 revolutions per minute. 
This means it's able to pull for longer in each gear, reaching 60 miles per hour from a standstill in 8.6 seconds and on to a top speed of 135 miles per hour. It's a quiet refined unit most of the time, only become a touch raucous at the top of the rev range. Give the accelerator a firm squeeze even in sixth gear and there's useful surge of torque pushing the car onwards. And yet, it doesn't quite feel as powerful as the 165 horsepower suggests, and we'd question how well the engine would perform if the car were loaded with passengers. Take a test drive if you're in doubt. The most powerful petrol engine in the range is the 260 horsepower 2.0 litre turbo 4x4. Capable of the 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint in 7.1 seconds and a top speed of 152 miles per hour, it will likely be the quickest Insignia Sports Tourer on sale, unless the rumored VXR model comes to fruition. Torque is rated at 400 newton meters. It certainly feels every bit as quick as the 0 to 60 miles per hour time suggests, but those after a sporty drive will be disappointed. The engine sound is dull and the response is muted. We struggle to see who would buy this engine, so bear in mind the potential for poor residual values as a result. Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tura diesel engine's diesel power comes in the shape of a 1.6-litre turbo D Quatec or 2.0-litre turbo D engine. The former is used on a variety of other Vauxhall models and is available in two states of tune. The lowest of which produces 110 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque giving a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 10.9 seconds and a top speed of 127 miles per hour move up to the 136 horsepower version and you get an extra 20 newton meters of torque which is enough to cut 0 to 60 miles per hour down to 9.9 .9 seconds 10.2 for the auto top speed is 131 miles per hour for the manual version and 126 miles per hour for the auto this is expected to be the biggest selling engine with the glut of torque it produces useful for everyday driving. However, it becomes coarse and flat after 3000 revolutions per minute, meaning there's little reason to hold onto the gears. It's also quite apparent that sixth gear is firmly intended for motorway use, as the car struggles to produce any meaningful pull below 70 miles per hour in this gear. Rounding off the diesel engine options is the 170 horsepower 2.0 litre turbo D. Developing 400 newton meters of torque and capable of the 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint in 8.4 seconds, 8.6 for the auto. Top speed is rated at 139 miles per hour for the 6 speed manual and 137 miles per hour for the auto. We've not driven this engine yet, but reckon its combination of effortless pulling power and strong fuel economy could make it the motor to have. Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tour gearbox options are 6-speed manual gearboxes standard fit on all engines except the 170 horsepower 2.0 litre diesel and the 260 horsepower 2.0 litre petrol. Instead, they come with an 8-speed automatic transmission only, which is also available as a cost option on the 136 horsepower 1.6 litre diesel. The manual is light and easy to use, but feels soft and sludgy when switching between ratios. It's nowhere near as precise as the manual transmission in a Mazda 6 wagon or Ford Mondeo Estate, example. We only had a brief go in the 8-speed automatic, but can report it shifts gears smoothly and responds to down changes with reasonable speed, there's no paddles on the wheel, just the central selector. Focus on comfort rather than sporty handling lighter curb weight means more responsive drive plenty of grip, but also plenty of body roll. Vauxhall knows its Insignia Sports Tour customer base exceptionally well, and realizes that designing a firm, sporty large estate is just about the best way to scare every last one of them off. Hence why the 2017 Insignia Sports Tour is firmly focused towards soft, supple riding comfort no matter which spec you have it in. However, despite the car's increased size it's lost up to 200 kilograms over its predecessor, meaning it does feel a touch lighter on its feet and more willing to turn into a bend. Drive around at a slow to medium pace and it flows nicely from corner to corner, with a slow but well judged steering feel and adequate body control. Yet, push on to higher speeds and the Insignia Sports Tourer begins to falter. Body roll, the body shell's lateral movement on the chassis, increases substantially the quicker you go, or during emergency maneuvers, and although outright grip levels are high, it doesn't feel anywhere near as crisp to drive as a Mazda 6, or even a Skoda Superb for that matter. Safe and competent in the corners, but Vauxhall's biggest state is lacking in driver enjoyment. Despite the car's size, 
it's not hugely difficult to park or place in tight spaces. There's decent visibility on all corners of the car width, even if the blind spots are larger than on your average family estate. Disappointingly, parking sensors are only standard on high-spec cars, otherwise being available as a cost option. Functional interior isn't particularly stylish all buttons and dials are easy to read and use however ergonomics spoiled by significant blind spots sit behind the wheel of the Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer and you immediately feel that the cabin has been geared up towards the driver. The seat and steering wheel carry excellent adjustment, while the sat-nav screen is angled usefully in the direction of the driver. Dead ahead is the clear, but slightly drab looking dials on lower spec models, improving to a snazzy 8.0-inch digital display on Elite NAF versions. The steering wheel is chunky but visually attractive, and doesn't impede on the driver's view of the dials. Cheap feeling indicator stalks spoil the sense of quality, however, as do the odd bits of hard plastic scattered around the cabin. And while most of the buttons and switches have been upgraded over the previous generation model, there's still some which feel like they've been fished out of the Vauxhall parts bin. The tacky plastic handbrake switch is a prime example. The central infotainment screen, while helpfully angled towards the driver, sits with excessive upward slant and is too far away from the driver. A handily placed ridge below the screen for the user to rest their wrist on helps make up for this, though. All-round visibility is reasonable for a car in this class, plus the optional head-up display is worth spessing if you can stretch to it, offering clear info on vehicle data, navigation and multimedia. The Insignia Sports Tourer was designed for to provide excellent ride comfort and superb cruising manners, and, on that front, Vauxhall's engineers have succeeded. Whether you're travelling over pockmarked urban roads or badly surfaced motorways, Vauxhall's biggest state is impressively smooth and refined. Ride quality obviously deteriorates with larger alloy wheels, but on the standard 17-inch rims the inside China Sports Tourer absorbs bumps and potholes with aplomb. The only time it comes undone is when driven over sharp repeated bumps, as the soft suspension struggles to react to the undulations in time. Up front and in the back, the seats are broad and comfortable, with plenty of support all round. There's tons of space, too, meaning rear seat passengers can really stretch out on long journeys. Road noise could be improved, even on the smaller 17-inch alloys, at speeds above 50 miles per hour, and is a noticeable blot on the copybook of an otherwise refined package. Smooth. Relaxed ride quality plenty of adjustment in driving position excellent levels of space all around the Insignia Sports Tourer was designed for to provide excellent ride comfort and superb cruising manners, and, on that front, Vauxhall's engineers have succeeded. Whether you're travelling over pockmarked urban roads or badly surfaced motorways, Vauxhall's biggest state is impressively smooth and refined. Ride quality obviously deteriorates with larger alloy wheels. But on the standard 17-inch rims the inside China Sports Tourer absorbs bumps and potholes with aplomb. The only time it comes undone is when driven over sharp, repeated bumps, as the soft suspension struggles to react to the undulations in time. Up front and in the back, the seats are broad and comfortable, with plenty of support all round. There's tons of space, too, meaning rear seat passengers can really stretch out on long journeys. Road noise could be improved even on the smaller 17-inch alloys, at speeds above 50 miles per hour, and is a noticeable blot on the copybook of an otherwise refined package. Five trim levels to choose from Sporty 3 the most popular excellent range of standard kit on all versions Vauxhall offers five main trim levels with the Insignia Sports Tourer, starting with the base spec design and rising to top of the range Elite NAF. Design and 3 are both available with the NAF suffix, which adds sat NAF, with fully integrated European mapping and an 8.0-inch color infotainment screen. Standard Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer equipment kicking off the range is the base spec design trim. This includes R4.0 IntelliLink link audio system with DAB radio and Bluetooth phone connectivity 7.0-inch color touch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Vauxhall on Star with 4G Wi-Fi hotspot aircon automatic headlights, keyless entry and keyless ignition leather steering wheel autonomous emergency braking. Lane departure warning with lane assist 17 inch alloy wheels moving up to 3 trim add some extra kit and sporty styling touches to the Insignia Sports Tourer, including, front fog lights dark tinted rear windows rain sensitive windscreen wipers sports front seats and sports pedals dual zone climate control twin rear USB sockets auto dimming rear view mirrors rear VX line NAF brings a sporty, more aggressive look to the car, adding, no cost option of 18 inch alloy wheels.
excluding 1.6 diesel models VXR styling pack, including sports style front and rear bumpers, side sills and visible exhaust tailpipe heated, flat bottom, leather covered VX line steering wheel dark fabric headlining 4.2 inch dashboard color information display for those after more equipment, tech line NAF adds to design spec with the addition of, rain sensitive windscreen wipers front and rear parking sensors dual zone electronic climate control twin rear usb sockets auto dimming rear view mirror 4.2 inch dashboard color information display driver's seat tilt and lumbar adjustment front passenger seat height adjustment top spec elite naf is as plush as the insignia sports tour gets and on top of tech line naf trim includes adaptive intel Ilox led matrix headlights dark tinted rear windows leather seats facings heated front seats and outer rear seats 8.0 inch dashboard color information display Bose premium sound system 260 horsepower turbo 4x4 models only Vox all insignia sports tour optional equipment much of the insignia sports tours optional kit comes in the form of fancy tech design to make the drivers and passengers life easier and more comfortable flex ride is Vox all's take on different switchable drive modes and includes adaptive suspension for different road conditions. Driving assistance pack 2 on all trims aside from design, design NAF, and features adaptive cruise control which, on automatic models, will also work in traffic jams, capable of coming to a complete stop and then setting off again with the car in front. Driving assistance pack 4 is only available on NAF models, and includes automatic parking, blind spot monitoring, a rear view camera and rear cross traffic alert. A head-up display can also be specced on NAF models in conjunction with the 8.0-inch dashboard information display. A variety of leather seat trims are also available, as is a Bose premium sound system and wireless phone charger for mobile phones. Winter Pack 1, 2, 3 and 4 add a variety of heating elements, including heated front seats, steering wheel and windscreen, depending on whether leather seat trim and the VXR interior pack has been specced. A towing pack, flex organizer pack including a boot storage net and inserts on rails to keep luggage in place, power tailgate and panoramic glass sunroof are available, just beware that the latter compromises headroom in the rear. Also on offer is a wide selection of metallic paint and alloy wheels, including lava red, abalone white and emerald green for the former. Expected 5-star Euro and cap crash rating wide range of standard safety kit fitted as standard 3 isofix points in total. Located across rear seats as well as boasting six airbags, ABS and ESP, the Insignia Sports Tour also comes standard with advanced safety kits such as autonomous emergency braking with forward collision warning, lane departure warning with lane assist and following distance indicator, displays how many seconds you are traveling behind the car in front. Optional safety equipment includes adaptive cruise control with stop and go function, capable of bringing the car to a halt in traffic, front parking sensors as well as the standard rear ones, automatic parking, traffic sign recognition and blind spot monitoring. Other safety devices such as an energy absorbing steering column, side impact protection beams and front and rear deformation zones are also included as standard. If you frequently reverse out of tight spaces or onto a busy main road, then the optional rear view camera and rear cross traffic alert is exceptionally useful. The latter gives an audible warning should a car be approaching the vehicle or reversing out of a parking space or driveway. As for the actual physical safety of the car in an accident, the first generation Insignia scored the full 5 stars in its pre-2009 Euro and Cap crash test, and there's no reason to believe that this 2017 Sports Tourer model should get anything less than maximum marks. Large boot, although not quite as big as some rivals bags of space in the front and rear seats plenty of storage dotted around the cabin much has been made of the Insignia Sports Tourer's boot size, but whichever way you square it, total luggage capacity lags behind some of its rivals. Measuring up at 560 litres with the rear seats in place and 1665 litres with them folded down, this lags significantly behind the Skoda Superb at 661,950 litres and the Volkswagen Pass at 650 and 1,780 litres. Aside from this the Insignia Sports Tourer benefits from ample rear leg and headroom, the latter is noticeably reduced by the optional panoramic sunroof, however. The former, especially, really allows rear seat passengers to stretch their legs out providing the front seat passenger hasn't got the seat position too far back. Other benefits include oodles of storage space spread throughout the cabin, including capacious door bins and cup holders capable of swallowing all but the largest of drinks bottles. 
There's also a generously sized glove box and armrest storage area, useful for hiding valuables out of sight. Those with children will find the three rear isofix points incredibly useful, especially since all three, including the middle one, appear wide enough to accommodate a full-size child seat.